Be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. Welcome back to the VOS. You're listening Voice of Samdo. Today I'm going to bring you a new page from the website of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama and it is about an appeal to all Chinese spiritual brothers and sisters. Today I would like to make a personal appeal to all Chinese spiritual brothers and sisters both inside as well as outside the People's Republic of China and especially to the followers of the Buddha. I do this as a Buddhist monk and a student of all our most reverent teacher, the Buddha. I have already made an appeal to the general Chinese community. Here, I'm appealing to you, my spiritual brothers and sisters, on an urgent humanitarian matter. The Chinese and the Tibetan people share common spiritual heritage in Mahayana Buddhism. We worship the Buddha of compassion, Gyan Yin in Chinese tradition and the cherished Sikh in Tibetan tradition and cherish compassion for all suffering beings as one of the highest spiritual ideals. Furthermore, since Buddhism flourished in China before it came to Tibet from India, I have always viewed the Chinese Buddhist with a reverence due to their senior spiritual brothers and sisters. As most of you are aware, beginning with the 10th of March this year, a series of demonstrations have taken place in Lhasa and across many Tibetan areas. These are caused by the deep Tibetan resentment against the policies of China's government. I have been deeply saddened by the loss of life both Chinese and Tibetans and immediately appealed to both the Chinese authority and the Tibetan for restraint. I especially appeal to the Tibetans not to resort to violence. Unfortunately, the Chinese authority have resorted to brutal methods to deal with the development despite appeals for restraint by many world leaders, NGOs, and noted world citizens, particularly many Chinese scholars. In the process, there has been loss of life, injuries to many, and detention of large number of Tibetans. The crackdown still continues especially targeting monastic institutions which have traditionally been the repository res of ancient Buddhist knowledge and tradition. Many of these have been sealed off. We have reports that many of those detained are beaten and treated harshly. These repressive measures seem to be part of an officially sanctioned systematic policy. With no international observers, journalists, or even the tourists allowed to Tibet. I am deeply worried about the fate of the Tibetans. Many of those injured in the crackdown, especially in the remote areas, are too terrified to seek medical treatment for fear of arrest. According to some reliable resources, people are fleeing to the mountain where they have no access to food and shelter. Those who remain behind are living in a constant state of fear, being the next to be arrested. I am deeply pained by this ongoing suffering. I am very worried where all this tragic development might lead to the ultimately. I don't believe that repressive measure can achieve any long-term solution. The best way forward is to resolve the issue between the Tibetan and the Chinese leadership through dialogue. As I have been advocating for a long time, I have repeatedly assured the leadership of the Public Republic of China that I am not seeking independence. What I am seeking is a meaningful autonomy for the Tibetan people that would ensure the long-term survival of our Buddhist culture, our language, and our distinct identity as a people. The rich Tibetan Buddhist culture is part of the large cultural heritage of the People's Republic of China and has the potential to benefit our Chinese brothers and sisters. In the light of the present crisis, I appeal to all of you to help call for an immediate end 
to the ongoing brutal crackdown for the release of all who have been detained and to call for providing immediate medical care to the injured. By His Holiness the Fortin Dalai Lama in Hamilton, New York, April 24, 2008. Thank you very much.